This is part 6 of Blazor tutorial. As we progress through this course, we want to build an employee management system that allows us to create, read, update and delete employees. So the obvious first thing that we need is the employee class. It has standard employee properties like employee ID, first name, last name, etc. Gender property type is gender which is an enum similarly department property type is department and this is a class and it contains two properties department id and department name our obvious next step is to create these model classes we're going to create them in a separate dotnet standard class library project if you're wondering why we chose dotnet standard class library project well it allows us to reuse these models in many different project types across the dotnet ecosystem in fact initially we'll be using these models in a blazor web application project as we progress through this course we'll be creating sp.net core restful services these services provide the data our blazor project needs even in the restful services project we'll be using these model classes Fire up Visual Studio and create a new project. So file, new, project. In this new project dialog, search for class library. We want to create a .NET standard class library project. Let's name our project employee management dot models. On my machine, I want to create it in the projects folder in C drive. And let's name our solution Blazor Tutorial. There we go. Both our solution and project are created. We have a file by default with name class1.cs. First, let's create this department class. So I'm going to rename this file from class1.cs to department.cs. It's asking us if we want to rename the class as well and we do. So let's click yes. Inside this class, we need just two properties, department ID and department name. Next, let's create the gender enum. So to our models project, let's add a new class file. Name it gender. What we want here is an enum and not a class. Make it public. And we want three options here. Finally, let's create the employee class. Add a new class file. Name it employee. Make the class public and include all the properties that we have seen on the slide. This completes the models project. Our next step is to create this Blazor web application project. So to this solution, let's add a new project. Select Blazor app template and click next. Let's name our project employee management dot web and then click create. We want to create Blazor server project Blazor WebAssembly is still in preview. There we go. Our project is created. At the moment, this models project is the startup project because we added this project to the solution first. We want this web project to be our startup project. So right click on the project and then select this option set as startup project from the context menu. Now, in this Blazor project, we need these model classes. So let's add a reference to the models project. Make sure you're on the projects tab and select the models project. If we expand dependencies and then projects, we see the reference that we have just added. Now, the Blazor server app template that comes with Visual Studio creates several files and folders that we don't actually need for our employee management portal. So to keep this project clean, let's delete those unnecessary files and folders. We don't need this data folder and these two files within that. And within the pages folder, we don't need counter, fetch data and index. And in the shared folder, we don't need this survey prompt component. So let's right click and delete all these. At this point, if we build a solution, we have a compilation error. This is because in this startup.cs file, we are still referencing code from the files that we have just deleted. We need to make two small modifications. We don't need this using declaration here. And if we scroll a bit down, we don't need this sample weather forecast service registration. Now. The first thing that we want to do within our Blazor project 
is display the list of employees. For that, we need employee list blazor component. Let's add it to the pages folder. So right click on the pages folder, add new item. And in the dialog that appears, select razor component and let's name our component employee list. We want this component to be rendered when we navigate to the root application URL. So let's include at page directive and then to specify the application root URL, let's include a single for slash. With all these changes in place, let's run our project and see what we've got so far. There we go. We are on the application root URL and we see our employee list component rendered as expected. When we click on these other links, we see this message, there's nothing at this address. That's because we deleted these components. So let's remove these menu items as well. These menu items are present in this nav menu component in the shared folder. So let's open that and delete these two menu items. We don't need this about link as well. This is coming from the main layout component, which again is present in the shared folder. And here is the div which displays that about link. Let's save all these changes and reload our browser page. There we go. As expected, we just have the home menu item. And when we click this, our employee list component is rendered as expected. In our next video, we'll implement this component and display a list of employees. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening. Thank you.